Bro, I have not filmed in several weeks now because uh, one, I was lazy and I wasn't bothered, and number two, I actually had a grade two pec tear in my left pec uh, and a grade one tear in both of my quads, which has kind of fucked up the bulk a little bit and fucked up the off-season a little bit. Uh, luckily it's on a grade 3, so nothing looks like overly fucked or different. Essentially what happened was I did a very heavy pec deck. I think I hurt it a little bit. Um, maybe grade 1 on the pec. I PR'd on bench the next week, hurt it a little more, took a deload. The deload hurt, I was benching like 80 kilos and was causing pain. I came back the week after and hit 150 for 5 on bench. Uh, if you follow me on IG you would have seen that. Follow me on IG, matchup underscore Dylan. With a pec tear already, probably grade 1, possible grade 2, I hit a bench PR several times. Um, Heaviest of which was 150 for five. And then went to see physio this weekend, turns out I have a grade two pec tear. So I'm very lucky I didn't tear it off the bone. Nothing looks awful. There's no like purple swelling or anything. There's a little bit of bruising, a little bit of uh, tightness, a little bit of uh, like tenderness to touch. But outside of that, I can still train. I'm going to give it a little rest, not going to do any pressing movements for a couple of weeks. Just hope the pain goes away, hope it heals itself. I don't need surgery or anything, which is nice. And I've got a great one tear in both my quads. So a couple of weeks back I was hack squatting and one of my mates pressed down on the hack squat and it collapsed on me. Because, you know, I can't hack squat 300 kilos out of nowhere. Um, so I missed leg day on Saturday. First leg day I missed in fucking, I think about seven years. I missed it, I had to take the rest, there's no point in squatting heavy, I don't want great two tears in both my quads. So, we're taking it pretty easy. I'll hit a good back day now. I'm gonna try and move through it pretty quick because it is pretty late. Without a further ado, I guess that's where I've been for the last two weeks. Just fucking crippled and dealing with injuries and whatnot. Not really in the mood to film. It's kind of been hard to work through, you know? It's a bit of a bummer, man, not being able to bench, uh, having to stress over injuries and shit going wrong and various other bits and pieces. So, we're back now. I'm gonna hit some nice little back day, keep it pretty technical, keep it pretty strict. I'm still weighing about 100 kilos, haven't lost any size. In fact, I think I'm a little bit leaner at 100, so a bit of muscle gain, a little bit of fat lost. I'm still pretty hefty. Uh, I had a chat to Jensen this morning. I'm gonna try and move into uh, like a mock prep, so I want to lean back out and lose some weight again, just so I feel health, like happier and healthier. Uh, I got a lot of body fat, and I feel like I can grow more. So that's the plan moving forward. I'll keep you guys in the loop. I should start filming more regularly again. I might film uh, an arm day at some stage this week, maybe a hamstring day. But again, no pressing, both you know for upper body or lower body. Whilst I've got these quad and pec injuries, so we'll see how we go. I hope I'll heal fast. Can't stress over it too much. What's done is done. I hit back last week with not too much pain, so I should be okay to hit it this week with not too much pain. As long as uh, nothing has like inadvertently gotten worse. I think um, I want to try and get my lifts all a bit more technical, like that 150 for 5 bench was fucking brutal. Uh, that last trip took me like 10 seconds to lock out. And the spotter was like just hovering over the bar. And I, I would far prefer to move that like comfortably. You know, if the goal is to bench four plates, I want to be able to do it comfortably. I don't want an ugly four plate bench. So that's the goal of my four plates. I want it just to be comfortable four plates. Um, and I'm sure it'll come once I'm back and everything's healed. I just have to be really patient. You know, I might wait till I'm pain free and then ease back into things from there and then just see how I go, man. I'm going to eat plenty of food, rest plenty. Uh, do everything I can in my power to make it heal as fast as possible. Physio, saunas, heat packs, stretching mobility, strengthen up supporting tissue, everything I can. Um, I got 120 light pull down here, let's see how this moves. The thing that I'm doing for back at the moment is trying to go as heavy as possible or as strict as possible and I'm willing to sacrifice the number of reps to keep it strict. But I think the most important thing or the thing that Jan Stomper was most important that I'm doing at the moment is if I can just hold that stretch position for like half a second but keep the tension while I do it and then get that good contraction following through, it's caused a hell of a lot of growth really, really quickly and I'm confident will I like, continue to do so. I just have to keep that locked in. It's very easy when you do lap pull downs to fall into the trap of doing partials. 
If you're gonna do partials, do the top half where you're stretching out under the weight. I just believe it's, it's gonna be so much more beneficial. There's no point in partialing the contraction, man. That part of the muscle doesn't want to fucking contract anymore. There's a reason you can't get up there. Um, but if you can contract with that initial part of the movement, contract that part of the muscle, there's more in the tank. Don't contract the part that doesn't want to contract anymore. It's done, it's done, it's not working anymore. Stop wasting time. As you would have seen like by those last few reps, I was just doing little pulls through my scapula and then stretching out. My back's already pumped, I've done one working set. It's effective for a reason and I've got stretch marks. And there's no better indicator of growing than stretch marks. If you get stretch marks, you're proud of that shit. It means you're making very good gains very, very quickly and whatever you're doing is fucking working and you're doing it right. Keep doing it. I think that one of the biggest things I've noticed recently is uh, in terms of strength, people really overestimating their strength. I had one guy, he said his back was a weak point. I was like, all right, well, let's see a lat pull down. He's like, well, I'm lat pull downing like 90 for 12, four sets. And I was like, first of all, they never say four sets in front of me again. That's just disgusting. Second of all, if I'm doing a set of 120 for like six to eight with partials, and then I'm doing a set of 90 as a back off set for like 12 to 15, depending on the day and how tired I am, with partials again. How the fuck, you, and I'm, you know, I'm a hell of a lot bigger than you are, and my back's on a weak point. How the fuck are you hitting the same weight for more volume? You're, you're not just like genetically stronger than me, you're doing it wrong. It's, it's not very hard. You need to take a step back and look at how you're doing shit. Jansa told me my back was needed to be wider. He wants me to have a wider back. We looked at my lap pull down, I was doing several things wrong. I dropped the weight back 10, 20 kilos, Dropped the rest back like four. Started doing it right, got stretch marks. Shit worked. I'm covering stretch marks fucking head to toe. I love the fuckers. There's no better feeling than waking up and being like, holy shit. I grew so much overnight that my skin is stretched and I've been able to keep up. There is no better feeling than that. All right, I think I'm gonna try and hit a max stack on this bastard. definitely too heavy. I couldn't get my elbows far enough back. We'll go lighter for the next one. This is what I mean though, like a little self-awareness. I finished that set and I was like, look, moved hard. I didn't feel it on my back, it just felt heavy. It, if the muscle doesn't feel fatigued, and you just feel like you can't do more reps but with no actual muscular fatigue, the weight's too heavy. It's only muscle giving out your nervous system. That's what happened now, I hit five reps. Back doesn't really feel pumped. Couldn't drive my elbows all the way back to get a good contraction. Not strong enough, that's fine. Give it a couple of weeks and you'll be stronger anyway. So we'll drop it down to 90 now. I'll go for a back off set of like 12 to 15, I think, depending on how it moves. And we're gonna move on to some more vertical pulls because, again, that's a weak point for me. <laughs> Far, far better. All right, onto the vertical pull. This machine's a bit of an interesting one because I know a lot of people don't like it, and it might not be the most like ergonomic efficient machine, but it feels really good for me in my upper middle back and in my lats, which are weak points, right? So if I have a muscle that doesn't generally fire or activate very well, and I find the perfect machine to activate said muscle, here's a little quiz for you. Even if that machine is dictated by most people as not the best machine to use, do I choose that machine over what might be a more optimal exercise? Fuck yes. Because that machine is the one that's optimal for me. Everyone's bodies are very individual. Some people can get away with, you know, eating fucking tacos and pizza and you know, they'll explode and be shredded. Others have to die very, very hard. Unfortunately, we're not all made equal, but I'm sure if you do what works best for you and if you enjoy that and can do it consistently, you will make such phenomenal gains, I can promise you. So take what I say with a grain of salt, apply it, see if it works, See if you grow. It works for me, it might work for you, it might not. Well, let's hit this damn machine.
I'll sort the way down a little bit, I think. Back off to that bitch. cramping a bit, my upper in the back. That, uh, I didn't quite get that firing for the last, like, ooh, six reps, but I got it there. So I'm happy. Let's hit a T-bar row. Ooh. Adjust my posture there. My fucking goofy ass shirt got stuck to the damn chest pad. I think the biggest downside of having the disproportionately large straps that I have is those fuckers fire on every goddamn exercise. Every pull exercise. They're not firing when I push or when I do legs, but then the only thing I've ever done for my traps is heavy rows, uh, probably with bad form and heavy squats, whereby the weight of that barbell is crushing my trap so much there's no choice but to respond and get bigger. I attribute all of my trap growth to squatting heavy. So if you want the most anabolic source three traps, rep over a 200 kilo squat, I promise you. I mean, it makes sense, man. Your body's balancing a 200 plus kilo barbell right on your T1, T2 spinal discs. It's gonna wanna put some muscle there to protect them and it's gonna grow your traps as a result. It's that fucking caveman way of building traps. Booga booga raw weight style is what we call that one. Right, let's hit a back off still on this T-bar. My back just doesn't want to contract anymore. I think it's fed up. Let's hit. Oh, is even a free cable machine? Fucking, I'm sure one's free. I um I didn't really feel those face pulls like at all, but I kind of went too light I think and I just fucking committed to doing a set of 30 instead of just you know pumping up the weak groups instead of stressing them too much. But I am tired, my back feels fried. I think I look nice and wide, at least in a shirt. You know, my hips are in here, look at where my shoulders are, holy shit. I just popped this fucker off. The lighting in here is not great for how wide I am, but it'll have to do. I think I was kind of wide. I'm pretty happy with it. That was the video. We're back with a fucked up left pec and two fucked up quads, but shit's moving, shit's still growing, still training, still eating, still sleeping. Doing what's gotta be done. Can't be fucking around, man. This is the off season. It's becoming a mass monster. No pussy shit here. No days off, no slacking. Anyway, I'm not sure what I'm next gonna film. I guess it depends on this pec injury and what I wanna film and what I feel like is impressive. But fuck it, we'll see how we go, you know? I'll see if I start leaning out, I'll see if I fucking... Oh. The, the series is still gonna become, it's still gonna be becoming a mass monster, whether I'm... 
Whew. Cutting or bulking, the goal is to develop lean mass. So nothing changes until prep, and then it's just the next prep series. And I don't know what I'm gonna call that yet, but anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. If you did enjoy this one or you enjoyed any of the other videos, make sure to subscribe. I would like to hit a thousand subscribers before the end of the year. I think that would be sick. We're at like 21K on IG at the time of filming this. Um, 24K on TikTok. Check out the IG and TikTok link down below. Uh, if you're interested in taking the supplements I take, Emerald Labs, link down below. Code match to save 15%. Uh, Apex Gym Gear for those funky little colored shorts I wear on my leg days. Code map for them as well. They've got really good shipping rates if you're Aussie. They've got really good shipping rates no matter where you are. They've got a flat rate shipping, so check out Apex Gym Gear down below. Uh, and I'm now working with EQ Foods as well. So if you're bulking and you don't really want to eat, they do 1,000 calorie cookies. That is a hard gainer's dream, bro. I would have killed for a 1,000 calorie cookie when I was a scrawny ass kid trying to put on my mask that I have now. So EQ Foods code Matt, I think maybe. There'll be a link down below, I'll the code somewhere. Again, if you did enjoy, make sure to subscribe, like the video, leave a comment, give me feedback. I'll see you guys in the next day of me fucking accumulating mass before the next prep. See you later.